So, in last week's episode, this is where we left off with launch pad that's pretty good. You know, I've made it work. The push, which is an amazing brain for Ableton. If you could only have one device for Ableton, I think it'd be this. Of course, they've come out with a newer iteration, part of the reason I was able to get it so cheap. But, this is America, and we can have more than one device. Hmm. Push. I'm gonna push you up. I'm gonna go back here, buddy. Good old buddy. Never gonna get rid of you. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the brother, the missing, the prodigal son, the prodigal, the son. Our eyes. Oh wait, there's a power button. Our eyes. Well, I said it. I said I would get it evened out, I'd get it fixed, you know, where I got just what I need to do, the thing that I need to do, um, and now I have it. So let's talk about this for a minute, in fact I'm going to take you guys down from here. So what is this you might be asking, Nathan why do you need this? Nathan you're an idiot, you're about to have a kid in a month and you got this. Well guys I'm going to be honest with you, I accidentally got this. In fact, I even had it when I filmed the last video. I tricked you. I had it the whole time, which is why I knew I needed it. This, this is kind of an embarrassing story, but I'll tell it because it's a good story. I accidentally won an eBay auction. I didn't understand how binding a, a low bid was. I thought I would be okay, you know, bidding $500 under what the guy was asking for, but no one else bid on it, and I got a steal on this device. I did not spend very much on this. I spent almost nothing on this. And it turns out that it's kind of necessary, and I'm gonna explain why, and I'm gonna try to do it quickly without killing anyone's vibe. Yeah, that's a reference to you, guy from Reddit, who said I'm a vibe killer. Ableton push is great. Like I've kind of laid out in the last video in the beginning of this one, it's great if you only had one device, this would be the one, because because you can do anything you need to do. For example, let's say on my master track I wanted to add an EQ, and I wanted to do this effect that I'm sure you've heard. Here's the effect. Right there. That effect, where it, where it is starting in this like tin can, and then it's coming out like that. And you want to do, there's no way to do that combined with another thing with only the push. And I'll show you this. Putting you guys back up there. Sorry. Okay, so here we have the push. And we have all these amazing knobs. And we have a way of accessing the EQ setting that we want to tweak. And the way of doing that, the way of doing that is by clicking this master button. And it'll take us to the effect. You can see here EQ8. And so by simply moving this slider, we can adjust the frequency. I'm gonna get out my phone and take a video of this so you can see what it does. So by tweaking this number, we are tweaking that, okay? And so that's all good, you know? But the issue comes when I want to do something else at the same time. So let's say I'm doing a live performance and I have this effect, right? And I want to, I want to trigger another clip. And so what I'm gonna do, is I'm going to create a new audio track here. And this audio track is going to have the clip that I need to trigger. And you can see it right here, it's purple. So, this purple clip needs to be triggered. So when I'm in on my master, and I can tweak my EQ like before, and I need to trigger that, with this, I have to click session, and that, and it's triggered, okay? So now that it's triggered, what happens when I try to go back to the master? What happens when I go back into the primary view? I've deselected the master, and I've selected the track that that audio clip was on. And so I, you have to re-click master and do this. So here's what it looks like in practice. So we're chilling out here, okay, at our higher frequency. And that's great. And I'm slowly bringing it down, and I'm going to trigger my reverse right here right there, and so it's starting, but now I'm no longer, 
able to mess with that. And so now I'm no longer able to tweak that. And so even you can bring the launch pad into the equation, the same problem persists. Dang it. I'm using a pre-built skin over this, basically, that says this does this button makes you add an effect. This button makes you add a track. This button allows you to select your devices. You can quantize here, tap your tempo here. These knobs will control things when you are on the device, like now. And so this problem becomes extremely apparent when you're doing anything live, which is what I really want to do. I can't, I can't make the sounds in my head that I'm hearing. I can't make the sounds on my computer that I'm hearing in my head, okay? Which is where this beauty comes in. What you can do is you can wipe this clean by pressing the user button. And as you can see, all the lights go off. And now every single pad is assignable. But that means that in order to alter this, I would have to go into user, assign a MIDI, and to trigger my clips, I would lose all the functionality of this by doing that. This is like a blank slate. For example, what I can do is I can map this knob to the frequency knob. And so now I can start the playing. See, and you can see, I can add in bass. And so here I'm gonna add in that reverse. So the reverse is in now. I'm gonna slowly come down. And you, I mean, it's just, it's there, it works now. And so I can assign every single one of these knobs to do exactly what I want, and I can control volume here. Whereas here, I would have to hit, I would have to hit the volume button and then adjust the knobs. So in other words, when you take the push and you take the APC40 Mark I, these are both first iterations, hence the cheapness. When you take these devices and combine them using the push as an instrument, and this as a mappable control, I don't think there's anything you can't do live that it's possible to do live. And then, of course, you know, don't forget the keyboard. We can also do stuff with that too. If that doesn't make sense, feel free to let me know or ask a question below because I, I don't feel like I've done the best job explaining it. And part of that is because these devices are still pretty new to me. You know, I can explain the launch pad. I know it so well. These devices are still new. So is the keyboard. It's all kind of new. So let's embark on this journey together of learning how all this stuff works. I have the track that I made yesterday, but it's not finished. There was stuff I wasn't able to do with only the push. And so I'm going to do that. Man, the hiccups. So I'm going to do that stuff now uh, that I have this other device. Okay, so the first thing is that high pass that I just did. So. Let's go ahead and give that a go. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna record this automation manually. So check this out, you guys. I'm gonna start with the master down and with the EQ all the way maxed. Here we go. Yeah, I didn't quite like that. That was a little too quick. So let's try it again here. There it is, guys. That was so easy. Oh my gosh. Sick. Yeah, that's awesome. As you guys can probably see, I'm pretty excited about this whole combination here. Um, yeah, let's do the next one. So there's a mixing slash audio production. What the frick? Okay. There it is. So there's a trick in the audio world that involves using a plugin, a special delay plugin. And so I'm going to slap this on the master track and show you the effect. So here's the plugin itself. It's called H Delay. So you guys can hear. It does really funky things. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set these buttons in the, in my DAW to be these 
knobs, the knobs in the DAW to be the knobs, the knobs. So we'll set this delay to be this knob. We'll set this feedback to be this knob. And we'll set the dry wet to be that knob. And so now I can tweak these manually. <laughs> Yep. So I should be able to, like, starting here. Let's turn that dry wet down. Here we go. We're gonna we're gonna try to play it through once here. All right. I think I have it set up now. We're here. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. So I can tweak these knobs in real time to do this. Let's try it here. Oh, that's sick. Okay, let's do this. Let's record it. All right, here we go. Let's get right here. There we go. Sick. Let's listen back. Yeah, that was cool. So yeah, I tried to do that in the last video without this device and it wasn't working. I could not get it to work. Um, but now, it, this is awesome. These two devices are beautiful together. And that's it for the song. Let's listen to the final part here. So that's it, that's a, that's a wrap right there. I'm gonna upload that for my $5 Patreons and that'll be it. Exported, just like that, done. So I don't know exactly how observant, observant, observant. I don't know exactly how observant you guys are, but something in the frame that you can see right now, we are going to be talking about in tomorrow's video. It's something new, something fun, and something absolutely necessary, as I just found out. And something absolutely essential now. So yeah, you can either pause it and try to figure it out and comment down below, or you can just be patient and wait till tomorrow. Until then, I'll talk to you guys later, and peace.